Welcome friends, in this one, let's take a look at finding the domain of the square root of x squared minus 4. Basic logic is x squared minus 4, whatever the expression there is, always greater than or equal to 0. On the left side, you can write that as x squared minus 2 squared is greater than or equal to 0. Then you factor that because it's a difference of two squares, so it's x minus 2, and then here it's x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Then you need to put this on a number line. So mark a number line somewhere, and just mark the roots of the expression. So that means the opposite of negative 2 right here is positive 2, and the opposite of positive 2 in this position, that opposite is negative 2. So you mark that over here, negative 2. And then you need to just choose sample values and test. So what I can do is over here, I can choose, for example, x equals negative 3 as my sample value and plug it in. I'm going to use the original x squared minus 4 to check. It's the easiest, so it's going to be there for negative 3 basically squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So on the left side, you have 9 minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. Is 5 greater than or equal to 0? Well, that is clearly true. Then here between them, I can use some other value. Let me separate this out a little bit more. I'm going to use here, say, x equals 0. It's between negative 2 and positive 2, and it's really easy to work with. So, so here I'm going to have 0 squared minus 4 greater than or equal to 0. So on the left side, 0 squared goes away, and I end up with negative 4 greater than or equal to 0. Well, this is clearly false. All right, and then all the way on this side now, over here, say I'm going to choose a sample value like x equals positive 3. So when I work with it, it's going to give me 3 squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So that's 9 minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. That's 5 greater than or equal to 0, which is clearly true. Let's sketch in a solution on the number line. So first you need to first recognize that the 2 has to be included as part of everything. So you're going to do this, but then that has to be filled in. So fill this in this way, see? And then draw basically an arrow going to the right, this way. And remember that over here what you have is positive infinity. Let me move the whole thing over a tiny amount so everything fits better. And then over here on the left side, you're coming from negative infinity. Don't forget that. So negative infinity this way. Move this over. And you're going to have to draw an arrow beginning at 2 and going this way forever towards negative infinity. And again, you need to include the negative 2 as part of it. So take this and put a copy right there at negative 2. And now you can build up your solution stated either in inequality notation or interval notation. Let's do it both. Inequality notation will look like this. Well, look at the picture, right? You're going from negative infinity up to negative 2. Then you got to hop over negative 2 and then resume all the way on the right side at 2 and go towards positive infinity. So in terms of inequality notation, that would look like the following. x is less than or equal to negative 2. And then the or means you're basically hopping over the gap. And then you got to put something like x is greater than or equal to positive 2. Let's do it also in interval notation. That's a bit trickier sometimes. Negative infinity or positive infinity, always parentheses. An included value like negative 2 or positive 2 always gets a bracket. So here's going to look like this. It's going to be negative infinity, comma, negative 2 bracket. And then the u for union, that indicates you're skipping over negative 2 to positive 2. Then you have to resume on the other side. So bracket, 2, comma, and then here, positive infinity. Thanks so much for watching. If this has been helpful, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in another video.